Hi everybody, welcome to the 2021 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference. Uh, our next session is with Dr. Ian Douglas of uh, Vets Beyond Borders. Um, and his uh, session title is Vets Beyond Borders, Australian Veterinary Emergency Response Team, a novel veterinary response to wildlife rescue and welfare in Australia. And we're really very privileged to have Ian with us today. And um, if you're interested to learn more about him or this presentation, you can go to our website under speakers and read the abstract and bio there. And before we start, I've just got a few housekeeping notes. So the Zoom chat feature is uh, disabled for this session. So if you have any questions, please type those in the Q&A. We'll get to those at the end of the presentation. Uh, we'd like to encourage you to use the hashtag GADMCONF um, if you're on Twitter or in other social media. And at the end of this session, as you leave, there will be an evaluation and we'd be really grateful for your feedback. And just as a reminder, we are recording this session. Uh, we will be editing these videos and making them available in July when we have our GADMAC award ceremony and we launch the, um, the edition of Australian Journal of Emergency Management. So without further delays, Ian, um, thank you for joining us and we're looking forward to hearing from you and over to you. Many thanks, Mel. Uh, sorry about the initial headaches. Um, and good afternoon from Adelaide, South Australia, wherever and whenever you may be. Firstly, many thanks to the organizing committee for inviting Vets Beyond Borders to present at uh, what has been a fascinating and much needed conference. And clearly, <laughs> a major logistical exercise. So congratulations to everyone involved in getting up and running and keeping it up and running as well. Uh, it must be said at the outset uh, that uh, Vets Beyond Borders is a relative newcomer in terms of formal involvement in the area of emergency response, but we've learned a lot in a, in a short time uh, in establishing and, and rolling out the Australian Veterinary Emergency Response Team initiative, especially following the dreadful events last year uh, here in Australia. I think that in order to understand Avert's structure and aims, it would be useful to provide a very brief, very brief background on the organisation. Uh, VBB was established in 2005 uh, after a small group of vets got together in Sydney to share their individual unrelated volunteering experiences over clearly way too many cups of coffee but, uh, because we made the arguably rash decision thereafter uh, to pull our combined experiences into uh, an organization. Much has changed since that time, uh, but Vespi on Borders operations have always been based on the creation and development of links. Uh, links between the veterinary profession, the veterinarians and vet nurses, and groups involved in clinical work to improve animal welfare we attach great importance to the collaboration and partnership arrangements in all our activities. We've been increasingly involved in discussions with global bodies active in the One Health arena. Uh, the uh, hot topic of the moment being the zero by 2030, uh, zero human deaths from dog mediated rabies uh, run under the auspices of uh, WHO, OIE and others that I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with. Our field work is delivered by two programs, Vet Train and Vet Match, uh, originally designed to assist animal welfare and public health efforts overseas, especially on the Indian subcontinent. Under Vet Train, uh, we provide free clinical training courses uh, to veterinary personnel working with animal welfare projects and in parts of the world where C BD opportunities are rare and often unaffordable. VetTrain has quite a broad scope uh, and also produces community and school-based education programs to support the clinical activities of the groups with which we work. Uh, the materials accent the importance of responsible animal ownership uh, and rabies awareness. Vet Match is our original program involving the deployment of veterinary volunteers to projects fo focused on the health and welfare of animals and communities. The groups with which we participate have successfully completed VBB's partner organization application process to ensure that as much as possible, our volunteers can perform useful work and have a positive experience in so doing. 
Following registration, these organizations are able to request the assistance of Vets Beyond Borders in their day-to-day -day clinical and outreach activities. The original focus of VetMatch was the provision of assistance to groups working with developing communities in countries where rabies is the major One Health issue. We were in, intensively involved in the establishment and operation of mass dog sterilization and anti-rabies vaccination programs in India. And we continue to provide our volunteers to those projects and our many other partner organizations around the world. In recent years, we've been developing a presence in Australia. Uh, there can be no doubt that we have our fair share of animal welfare concerns in this country too. Under VetMatch Australia, we began entering into formal collaborations with groups active in this country, uh, such as the Animal Welfare League in New South Wales, providing volunteers in response to requests for additional uh, veterinary personnel, especially when they head off to work in outlying regions. Moving on to the establishment of the AVERT team. Given growing concerns regarding climate change impacts, the increasing frequency and severity of bushfires and cyclones, and the possibility of outbreaks of emergency infectious diseases, such as rabies and swine fever in this country, it seemed logical to extend our activities and, and position ourselves to be able to provide veterinary volunteers to assist in such responses. This led directly to the launch of AVERT in 2015. And this proved to be a, a very timely development, sadly. At this point, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of our then CEO, Marianne Dalton, who sadly died last year. Uh, she was pivotal in getting AVERT off the ground and holding preparatory meetings uh, with governments and other stakeholders in the early stages. Now, this was the initial structure of the AVERT program. Uh, the first stage involved the creation of an online volunteer application process accessed via the BBB website, encouraging applications from both veterinarians and veterinary nurses. Uh, we all know that high quality nursing is critical to high quality patient care. It's quite a, a detailed interrogation that applicants have to go through. Uh, during the process, a, a deal of information is gathered, including on licenses held, uh, vaccination status uh, of particular relevance, given the increasing risk of rabies incursion into Australia. And on that note, as far as we are aware, uh, VBB is the only organization in Australia with a significant number of anti-rabies vaccinated volunteers. Uh, and clearly the importance of having vaccinated veterinary personnel ready to respond to rabies outbreak in this country is, is obvious. We also gather information on previous training undertaken by applicants in the realms of biosecurity, uh, emergency responses, data management, and, and any other relevant courses that they've uh, undertaken. And they're also asked to let us know about previous emergency deployments and their level of knowledge and understanding of the importance of team structure in emergency responses. Uh, relevant ex expertise is, is obviously vital too. Uh, so they have to let us know their status in regards to postgraduate training and qualifications, including speciality status and whichever dis discipline that may be. Completed applications are assessed and approved volunteers registered. Uh, all information, including skill sets, training and experience is maintained on our confidential database. Thereafter, uh, VBB maintains regular communications with its avert community with respect to training opportunities and obviously following formal requests for assistance during emergencies. 
this initial design entailed engagement with state government bodies and the support of the Australian Veterinary Association to provide volunteers to assist with affected livestock and wildlife. Avert was also positioned to offer support to veterinary practices in the vicinity of the fires. Over 3,000 homes were destroyed during those fires, as many of us will remember. Uh, several vet clinics, however, were also impacted either directly by the fires or indirectly in terms of the, the caseload that arose subsequent to the fires. And that work, to a large extent, was carried out pro bono by the, the veterinarians in, that, in those affected clinics. And we were able to offer short-term staffing of these clinics using avert volunteers and also assistance with costs of consumables used in their pro bono work. And that seemed to work fine. Um, but as the days passed, we started to be contacted by wildlife rescue groups advising us that they were experiencing difficulty in sourcing veterinary support. We were initially reluctant to interpolate avert between response coordinators and groups on the ground. However, after discussion with our government partners, we made the decision to communicate directly with wildlife rescue groups and to arrange volunteer deployment directly with them. And the upshot of that was that over the course of the response of the subsequent months, uh, we deployed 52 avert volunteers who provided over 400 volunteer days of service uh, with an imputed value conservatively estimated at over 200,000 Australian dollars. I should point out that avert doesn't involve itself in search and rescue per se, unless we receive a formal request from a response coordinator and have volunteers with fire ground training available to assist approved teams. Uh, it must also be borne in mind that the management of severe burns and related illnesses is a very long-term proposition and it requires ongoing deployments for many months. In fact, we've only recently ceased deploying volunteers to some uh, rescue uh, groups following the fires last year. Also, the vast majority of, of avert volunteers are employed in private practice uh, or other full-time positions and are unable to donate their time for more than a week or so at a time and sometimes less. And all this means that the coordination of this effort is a very time-consuming task. Uh, and that responsibility, thankfully, now falls on the capable shoulders of our program's director and coordinator, Robert Leach. Uh, at this point, I'd just like to acknowledge the support of Jetstar Airways, uh, providing free flights to enable volunteers to travel to interstate placements. Uh, sadly, the support was soon impacted by COVID, uh, but it was much appreciated nonetheless. Now to the, the nitty gritty, I, I suppose, of this presentation and, and something that I'm sure we, we all have, have been through, uh, the lessons learned as a result of last year. And largely as a result of the, the scale of the disaster, uh, we identified a, a multiplicity of take homes once the, the dust had settled. As you're likely aware, uh, there's an extensive debriefing process underway uh, involving stakeholders in the response to last year's fires. Uh, and Best Beyond Borders is directly contributing to those reviews being run by state and federal governments. And I'm sure we all hope that this will lead to clearer lines of communication and more efficient collaborations in future events. With respect to the uh, clinical experience of deployed volunteers, uh, there is little doubt that the benefits of rapid deployment of wildlife specialists and veterinary personnel with in-depth experience in wildlife care uh, are strong, especially in establishing and managing the day-to-day -day operations of triage and care facilities. 
it would have been wonderful if all sites were as well set up as those in these images. However, sadly, that was not the case. And that, we do admit, led to some disgruntlement on the behalf of volunteers and also staff, other staff working uh, in those groups. Also, wildlife veterinary knowledge is, is really helpful to help ensure that appropriate clinical protocols are implemented and maintained, uh, especially with respect to handling chemical restraint, pain relief, and euthanasia, sadly. As a result, although AVERT is also involved in providing care to livestock and pets, we have prioritized increasing the percentage of avert volunteers with formal wildlife specific training. To that end, under our vet train program, and thanks to the generous support of these sponsors, we've been able to arrange training of avert volunteers through the Taronga Conservation Society. Uh, the training is in wildlife handling and treatment and it comprises five modules over three months uh, and one day's practical session at Taronga itself. The fee for this is usually in excess of two and a half thousand Australian dollars per person. That is well beyond our budget, but it was provided free to 24 of registered volunteers, thanks to these sponsors. And we really hope to be able to offer this again in the not too distant future. We're also constantly working on providing other trainings for the AVERT community. And thankfully, uh, relevant and high quality training is becoming more readily available, uh, uh, particularly after last year. Uh, training such as this awareness training offered by TAFE in New South Wales, the Technical Colleges in New South Wales, funded through the New South Wales Environmental Trust. And we anticipate being able to send uh, large numbers or significant numbers of volunteers to participate in that training. Our final concern related to conditions in the field. Although the original arrangement worked well with respect to livestock and pets, or at least the reports are that it did, uh, the effort became less well coordinated and more than likely less effective due to the lack of clarity regarding responsibility for deployment of volunteers to wildlife rescue groups. As a result, uh, vet, avert volunteers encountered significant variability with respect to on the ground conditions, uh, particularly the quality of facilities, the reliability of supply of materials and medications, uh, staffing expectations and the like. And also many of the, the temporary facilities were majorly impacted by the torrential rain that followed the fires, uh, which necessitated relocation in some instances and was indeed a, a major stressor for inpatients and volunteers alike. So we felt that the partner organization registration process that I went through earlier uh, that we utilized in establishing our overseas collaborations could apply here equally well in Australia and help to ensure that avert volunteers are able to use their time and skills effectively uh, and have a positive volunteering experience because we rely on repeat volunteering to maintain our services. So we've extended the partner organization concept to animal welfare and wildlife organizations in Australia. This process we feel helps to ensure that our volunteers will be able to perform their work under appropriate conditions. Uh, most recent partners to this process include Zoos Victoria uh, and Native Ark West Australia. And we are confident that this arrangement will result in more efficient and effective collaborations, which is the foundation of all the work that we do. And most importantly, improved health and welfare outcomes for the animals impacted by disaster. The recent fires in Western Australia that many of you will have heard about 
did demonstrate the responsiveness of avert. Within 48 hours of being advised by state authorities that avert volunteers may be required, an additional 384 vets and vet nurses had registered with avert, indicating willingness to volunteer. The fact that that, that thankfully, none needed to be deployed doesn't detract in any way from their commitment to animal welfare uh, and is a credit to the veterinary profession of which I'm proud to be a part. The current status is that uh, over 1800 registered volunteers are on our, our database with all details uh, maintained and kept confidential. Uh, that may seem like a very large number, and it is, but to an extent, Avert is a virtual army. Um, it must be borne in mind that only a small percentage of volunteers are available at any one time, and not for extended periods, as I've mentioned previously. As I've mentioned, we are making a concerted effort to increase the numbers of Avert volunteers with in-depth experience in wildlife medicine and surgery. Uh, however, livestock and pets are also impacted by disasters and uh, veterinarians with skills in those areas will always be required at, at such times. And AVERT is always ready uh, to arrange their deployment. So given the, the hard lessons learnt last year, I'd imagine that all organizations involved in the response will have significantly refined their operations. And I know that we did and will continue to do so. Uh, and Vespi on board is now has confidence that AVERT is appropriately structured and certainly much better positioned to play its part. Whatever, wherever, and whenever the next emergency may be. Many thanks for your time and the invitation once again. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation, Ian. Um, that was that was really interesting, and I think we all really appreciate your your um, thoughtful, sort of candid um, view of of the things that went well and less well um, during that recent uh, you know, large scale response um, across a lot of Australia during the fires in, in 2019 20. Um, so if you have any questions, I'd just like to encourage any of our attendees who are here to um, write some in the Q&A for us. Um, in the meantime, I'll maybe go with one of my own, if I may. Um, my understanding is that in some cases, I'm not sure if this is your general way of operating, is that you are able to supply vets to, to backfill essentially the local vets where there may be a bushfire. So for example, if there's a bushfire in the Blue Mountains, you might be able to bring people in to help with the, running the clinics, the day-to-day -day work, whilst the local vet is able to deploy and, and help at the local coalface. Is, 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 that, is that part of your plan or, or is, have I misunderstood that? No, no, Mel, that, that's indeed the case. Uh, yeah, last year, we did offer that service to the veterinary clinics, particularly uh, down south in New South Wales. Uh, a couple of them were really quite severely affected by the fires uh, and uh, that will continue. Uh, we also, as, as I mentioned, did uh, help with the costs of the pro bono work. Uh, there were a couple of practices who headed off uh, to areas like uh, uh, on the coast uh, near their clinics to do work uh, because there was very little veterinary presence there. And they spent a couple of days treating pets and wildlife and livestock. Uh, and largely the wildlife work was done pro bono. Uh, and so we were able to, uh, to help. Uh, uh, with defraying the costs of that and that would, will continue to be part of a vert yes yeah no i think it's, fa it's fantastic and as you will probably appreciate sort of on the program we've had uh, a number of presentations to do with the wildlife response in the in the black summer bushfires so we have heard from from peter norris about the work that you referenced in your presentation around the training that's now available and how there is you know just a lot of effort going on in this area especially for wildlife which is you know we're all very heartened to see and obviously it's sad that it's taken such a large um, event for that to happen but I think everyone is feeling a bit more positive that, that everyone is talking and plans are being written and put in place. 
Yeah, if there's anything positive out of all this, it, it is that, that people now understand the deficiencies and really tremendous efforts are being made to address that. And, and, and education uh, and training is critical to, to everything that we do. It would be nice to have all our volunteers trained in all disciplines and equally able to respond irrespective of what species were affected, but that's never going to be the case. But <laughs> if we can get a broad spread of people with relevant experience and training, uh, that, that would certainly help us, yeah, and everybody involved, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you know Chris Riley, but Chris has a question for you here. He says, can you tell us a bit more about how you obtain startup funding for your organisation? <laughs> well, we have a, a, a range of, of, of sponsors um, uh, that have supported our, our work based on our operational principle, which is we really have few uh, administrative overheads. We have two... Uh, part-time administrative staff. The rest of the work is carried out uh, by a volunteer board or the volunteers themselves. So we're, we like to think we're a pretty efficient organization when it comes to utilizing funds. And AVERT was time intensive. Uh, it's not materials intensive as such. And so yes, in the early stages of, of last year's fires, several of us were working 26 hours a day to get this process refined and up and running. Uh, and it was a very steep learning curve. Uh, and the bigger a vert becomes, the more comprehensive its service. Yes, we will require uh, more funding to keep that going. But uh, yes, in, the, in its actual structure, it's a fairly efficient uh, program. Mm. Fantastic. Um, we don't have any more questions from the floor, so I think we're sort of probably gonna draw it to a close. Um, thank you again so much for the time you've taken to prepare the presentation and to, to talk at the conference. We certainly really appreciate that. And I think having, having so many different voices coming in from the veterinary uh, emergency response side, we, be that around um, you know, the challenges for the vets, but also the way in which we're working on better planning and, and coordination, I think is a really positive thing. Um, well, it's been, a, been a pleasure, Mel, and thanks once again to you all for the uh, invitation to speak. Uh, it's been- and Now I've closed, I don't know if you would mind, I have one more question, so I will, I, I will sort of um, put that to you as well. We have, um, Nidhi has said that um, she can see that the organization um, uh, has extended to India also. Um, does, does your organization have a nodal office or key personnel in India, especially in the case of wildlife health? We are actually, interesting you mentioned that, we've been to discussions recently, we used to, um, and then when our operational model changed, such as we uh, don't actually run or establish programs in India, uh, we let that fall by the wayside for financial reasons. But exactly as you mentioned, there are definite positives in, in having a, a representative. And we've actually been in discussion last week with someone who may be able to help us based in Delhi and, and give us that point of contact that would be critical. But uh, responding to overseas emergencies is, is a, another paradigm. And we, we're interested in helping out any way we can, but at this stage, we're not structured to do that. Mm. And I hear you're in Canada too, I've just been told. You're frozen. <laughs> ah, I hear you're in Canada too. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. okay, so I think I will definitely draw it to a proper close now and not a pretend close as before. Um, thank you again, Ian, uh, for, your, for your time. Um, and to our attendees, thank you so much for coming along uh, this afternoon uh, or this morning or whatever time it is in your time zone. Um, we have one more presentation for this day, and that's in one and a half hours time. And that will be with Professor Ian Keller Kelman, who will be talking about a framework for animals and habitats in disaster related activities. So please come back and join us then. And in the meantime, you may have had a, an email about the social um, virtual cafe and trivia session we have at this time tomorrow. Um, so if you're interested in that, please register because we'll have a separate link for that uh, activity. So hopefully we'll see you again in the next session. Thanks again, Ian. Pleasure.